Hello and welcome to episode 57. So I'm, uh, guess where that is? It's the Nullamore Cliff. So I'm, uh, heading into South Australia to see some, uh, completely different. Should be great. Excited. Yeah, before I head off, I thought I'd come and have a look at the, uh, the Nullarbor Golf Links. Golf Links tee. So this runs right across the Nullarbor. So I've got hold of this Nullarbor map. Oh, that's where I am here, Norseman. And just about to head over. It's always exciting going across roads like this. Whether it's the Nullarbor, whether it's Barkley Highway, the road Kananara to Broome. Yeah, I went and brought myself another uh, jerry can. So I've got two 10 litre jerry cans. Just in case, you never know. Well, I'm about to uh, do it, head across the Nullarbor. So, uh, here, join me, see how we go. Yeah, so here I go, over the air highway to the east. See the uh, soils sort of going from the red sort of into this pinky colour. I've just arrived at Balladonia and we've got ourselves another Skylab Museum. So there, there's their sprints. And here we are at Balladonia, so it uh, looks like there's some pieces here. And that's a piece of meteorite just down there. The red X, yeah, the old red X bashes. So the forerunner to the Variety Club bash. I thought that was ET for a sec. The first red X. 1953. Yeah, so uh, a few days ago I was over near Perth and sort of planning to go north from there but uh, yeah, the wildflowers were going to be a while off yet so oh well, I decided to sort of come east I've just found another um, another one of these little Nullarbor links this one's called Skylab Uh, just near the roadhouse. So we've got the 90 mile straight, Australia's longest straight road, 446. So yeah, that's basically just here. I'm just about to start the longest stretch of straight road. Yeah, when you, when you don't think about it, it's just another road and then you see the little sign saying Kaguna, Kaguna, 110, you realise it's a more straight road. Just at the Kaguna blowhole. So just out of Kaguna. The signage says they can blow up to 72 kilometres an hour. Just come off the uh, straight stretch, the longest stretch. There's a uh, golf tee here too, golf links tee. Explorer Air headed an expedition from Adelaide to Albany, leaving Fowler's Bay 25th November 1841 with pack horses, supplies, embarked on a journey for over a thousand miles to King George Sound. So south of here Baxter was shot and two guides ran off with supplies and guns, leaving air only with Wiley. And after 
support from a French whaling ship off Cape Arid rested up and completed the journey arriving at King George Sound 6 July 1841 just passed a sign back there I forgot about this one Central Western Time Zone so advanced clocks 45 minutes just lost 45 minutes Just heading to the Murra L. Evelyn Cave, just near Cocklebitty. Gonna watch the uh, rocks that protrude out. Just in the Newt's Land Reserve. So there's the rock hole in here. Not the rock hole, the blow hole, I think they call it. It's not supposed to go down into any of these, which is fair enough. Yeah. See, look at that, it's sort of under the car. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically underneath me here. at uh, Cocklebitty Roadhouse. We've got another Golf Links one. This one's called the Eagle's Nest. So just northwest of here is a massive cave system. And uh, I, I was going to go in here. It's about 10 kilometers off the road in the dirt road. So I sort of didn't pop in, but uh, yeah, great big cave system. Uh, six kilometers, 6.4 kilometers apparently. A bit of grass on that one. That's the tea. Yeah, one thing I remember with all these roadhouses, you've got to watch the great big potholes. They've all got massive potholes everywhere. But I don't think I need fuel because I've just got fuel at uh, Kaiguna. So I'll uh, head through. from Majura Pass campground. Oh, yeah, it's uh, wind's come out a bit, but uh, yeah, it's quite uh, cool travelling. Yesterday got a bit warm at one point. Uh, with the sun on the side of the car but uh, I put the silver thing up on the other window so it kept it a bit cool but yeah I'll be doing this section here today the Majura to Eucala um, I've done that in summertime and that's pretty hot and from memory there was a lot of kangaroos sleeping on the side of the road so uh, you've got to mind for that it's also the Majura caves down there so I'll probably have a look at that uh, today as well um, apparently they're pretty good so I'll, I'll see how I go with that one yeah, it's quite a uh, quite a popular spot to come to. Well, it's a bit of a I don't know about a kilometre and a bit drive, and uh, yeah, it is a little is a little rocky, but uh, it sure is worth it. Jura Pass Roadhouse here. There's another golf links somewhere. So this is right at the roadhouse. This one's called Brumby's Run. Originally settled 1876. Well known for producing quality polo and cavalry horses for the British Imperial 
Indian Army. So uh, known as whalers, these horses were bred at Majura by ex-army officer who overlanded them to Eucala for shipment to foreign ports. So this is the tea. So I guess you must uh, head over that way. And then the uh, roadhouse is just here. Yeah, it's quite a big, quite a big place. There's quite a lot of motel rooms. Just going to have a look at the Majura Caves. It's about eight kilometres in, so we'll just see what the road's like. It's too rough, I'll turn around. I don't want to go get any, too many flat tyres around here. After about eight kilometres of bumpy road, I've finally got to the Ma Majura Cave. So I'll have a little look in here. Apparently there are little bats in here too. Oh yeah. I'm going to have a look at the other cave. See if you can get into that one. Maybe they're just too overgrown for getting into. These are very low. Oh yeah, I talked about kangaroo carcasses and things so there must be dingoes around here yeah you can just smell the yeah so the dingoes must bring the kangaroos in here we're talking about bats they look like they look like little sparrows or something yeah so there you go yeah you got all the, the bones everywhere Well, I don't know. I don't think I want to try and fit down that tiny little cave. I think I'll uh, give that a miss and I'll just put the, put the drone up, I think. Hopefully the little birds won't chase it like they did at the, the other cave yesterday. That's the thing with the drone. <laughs> Some birds probably think it's a predator after it's young or something or prey for our bigger bird. There's also a dingo gate. I'll have a bit of a look at a bit of a look at that on the way out. It's just a just a little oh, there's a hole there. There's a hole in there. So you need to be careful where you are walking. There's another hole. Little holes everywhere. Wow, so the cave's right underneath me. So coming up to what they call the dingo gate. Yeah, dingo gate, dingo fence. Dingo protection fence. This is Mudrabilla Roadhouse. Gee, all these places, you've got to watch the potholes. They never fix the potholes. Mudrabilla Motel. Watering hole. It's a Mudrabilla, named after one of the first two sheep stations on the Nullarbor Plain. It's starting to get a bit windy. There's been a lot of vans, a lot of trucks. Of course, a couple of months ago, they had um, the train line washed out. So, a lot of supplies didn't even get through to Western Australia. I think it's all okay now, but yeah, I think they're all relying on trucks. 
There we go, Eucla, 68 kilometres, state border, 80 kilometres. Flying Doctor airstrips. Sort of start to see the cliffs as well, by the looks of it. Eucla Pass. Well, there's the Southern Ocean, Great Australian Bight. Looks like I'll be heading down that little road there. I've never been down there before. So this is something new. Yeah, not a great distance in. The road's not bad. Oh, put the big hat on for this one. Yeah, I just arrived at the telegraph station at Eucla here. Well, I think I'm here. There's not many in, not much signage here. I wonder if it's up over this dune here. Yeah, like I was saying there was no sign, so I think I'm going here. Oh, here we go. There they are. Well, you see these in so many photos or videos. Actually, here. Yeah, got the graffiti there. Looks like a lot of people have engraved their names over the years as well. So I guess over the time this has all been covered in sand in different times. It's under here. Yeah, some of these have probably been here for many years. There's a 1975 one. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get all my information before I came, but I'll, uh, I'll have a read up and uh, put some information on when I'm putting this on on the video. Yeah, I wonder how many times it's been covered in sand. Oh yeah, I feel that sea breeze. Yeah, you can see by some of these doors that it's half of it's under the sand now. Yeah, apparently uh, the old jetty is here too, but I'm not sure which way to go for it. Well, I did the kilometre walk to come and look at the old jetty down here at the old um, telegraph station. So there it is. There's seabirds on there. Yeah, it's about a kilometre walk over the sand dunes. No signage, so I wasn't sure if I was heading in the right direction. Well, that was interesting. One of those never done before things. Oh, this is this way back to the car. This must be the air memorial here. Edward John Air, Baxter Wiley, Joey, Yarry, 1941, camped in this vicinity during the 1500 kilometre journey from Fowler's Bay to Albany. This is the sign, welcome to South Australia. 
no requirement to stop. Looks like the sign's been damaged at some point. Probably blown down in the wind. So there, that's it. Goodbye WA. Just started into South Australia and got myself a nice big wide load. Do you imagine being stuck behind this on the Nullarbor? Okay, Nullarbor, 184. Sejuna, 479. Augusta, 946. And here's one of those famous signs coming up with the camels. Camels, wombats, kangaroos. Next 88 kilometers. Stable cliff edges. Says this is scenic lookout number three. Gee, I'd love to see some whales a bit, a bit later on. That'd be great. Yeah, so you don't see the, so much of the cliffs here on this one. This is some of those caves. Some people dive on those caves. And I'd say at the very moment, I won't be putting the drone up. No way. I think it'll be blowing away. Oh well. I think this will suit me. When I know there's there's other plenty of good ones as well, so I may I may do one of them tomorrow. But, uh, you know, I might as well just sort of stop and enjoy what's here. I think this is called the 25 mile peg. I've got the car facing into the wind. So hopefully a uh, little bit of relief there. Dingoes? I can. I thought I could hear dingoes last night. Just like when I was at uh, Niagara Dam. It's going to be too windy, you won't be able to hear them. hundred dollar bill. I feel like the man on the hundred dollar bill. We look like the man on the hundred dollar bill. Yeah so uh, quite calm this morning. It's freezing. Very cold. That's the first time I've worn this thing. Glad it came in handy. I might put the gloves on too. But uh, yeah very calm. A bit overcast of course but we'll see how we go today. Got a cyclist here. Oh, Lucy's getting a tailwind. He's only got a backpack on his back. Yeah, I think this probably was one of the ones you could use to camp. Very rough road and it's almost like they've dug up the bitumen and uh, left it quite rough. Big potholes, you've got to watch where you're, you're driving. So I'll have a look at this one.
quite a few little spots, or there used to be campgrounds. Camp right on the edge. I'll see if there's any more. No whales here. Yeah, I was really hoping to get the drone up for here, but uh, the wind's sort of coming this way really strong and it probably blow the drone out to sea so well quite potentially could but strong enough to do it yeah I've just been potting along 80 kilometers an hour not in a rush This is the Bunda Cliffs campground. You need to be careful. I've just been looking at some whales over here. They're like about three different groups. But they look small, so they're either baby whales or they are quite far away. But they were sort of just down in that bit. Well, at the Bunda Cliffs for a camp. Literally at the Bunda Cliffs. I've just got the uh, car sheltering the little cooker. Get some uh, hot water. I just basically boil these two thermoses the night before so when I get up which is usually pretty early like 4 30. I'm only seeing the uh, sun going down just there on the land and it still has to drop even further. I've just spent two nights here on the uh, cliffs, so I'm right, right here in the uh, middle of the Great Australian Bight, as you can see, just down there. So well, it's goodbye to the cliffs for the time being. I'll head down to the uh, head of Bight and see if I can see some whales. It's a bit different from this morning, it was rain, pouring. And last night, it's been a fantastic couple of days here. Goodbye to the cliffs. Yeah, if you don't want to camp right on the cliff, you've got these sand dunes. Give you a little bit of protection. Another cyclist. This one's got a headwind. Yeah, about 20 k's from Nullarbor Roadhouse. And uh, yeah, you can notice a lot of the bushes are gone. The trees are gone. So yeah, starting to, starting to get uh, almost treeless anyway. Of course, that's what Nullarbor means. No trees, basically. Black like dog. Nullarbor Plain, the western end of the Nullarbor Plain. And not any trees now. I remember coming here once and there was a, a plane parked under the little roof up here. So there's, a, there's a little runway just behind, behind there. No 
Bonnaboo Roadhouse is the whale. This is the old, the old uh, roadhouse. Roadhouse, Malibu Roadhouse, and this is the uh, caravan park here. Which uh, usually tonight, if it's yeah, quite possibly, will be completely full. And the back there is the uh, Malibu Links. Yeah, there's the little runway there, so they do the scenic flights for the whales. So this is the Malibu Links. Ball links. Nullaball Roadhouse history. 1840, John Eyre came through. What else? 19, 1896, Arthur Ridges in first person to cycle across the Nullaball. 1917, Trans Australian Railway joined Western and Eastern Australia. 1941, construction of the Air Highway. 1957, Nullarbor Station starts selling petrol and open shop. The famous Nullarbor Nymph hoax took place. 1976, sealing of the air highway complete. This is a good mural. I like this mural because they put the shadow, the shadow under it. Gives it a real 3D look. Yeah, so, a Nullarbor. I am. Pygmy blue whale. I also saw the skeleton of one of those in Albany. So there we are, Norseman. That's about where I was last night. That's where I am now. Fuel at the Nullarbor. $2.73 a litre. I only put in 15 litres. Gets me to Nudru. They've got this sign a couple hundred metres down the road, but they've probably got it here so people don't have to stop. Got their head of bite. Head of bite whale centre. 12 kilometres. So it's a head of bite. Is it an information centre? This is, uh, must be the size of one of them. It's pretty big. Yeah, the lookout, the ride board walk to the left. I think I'll take the uh, lookout first. No, I'll take the board walk first. Yes, yeah, so you can see the cliffs are gone. And all the sand dunes here. I brought my uh, new binoculars today. So, uh, yeah, they're quite good actually. They were just $40 from Woolworths, just sitting in a camp bin. So yeah, that was good. According to the sign, those dunes are actually have ramped up to the cliff height. So there are cliffs behind there and uh, they're just, the sand dunes have just sort of gone up against them. This is the lookout at uh, Head of Bite. Yeah, so this is um, the only spot where you can sort of be below the cliff looking up.
Day. When I came here, I was just hoping to get one whale, but it must have been about five today. Fantastic. Oh, well, I saw a few there. It's good they've got some. It's warming up a bit. Here's the uh, famous camel kangaroo wombat sign. So facing west, of course I'm heading the other way. Yeah, that even gets its own little marker on wiki camps as well. Yeah, so I think that's the uh, Yolata over here. I think it used to be a petrol station, but it's not a petrol station anymore. On wiki camps, it says that there are minions coming up. Yeah, there they are. Yes, yeah, so I've set up at the, uh, I think it's called the Cohen School Rest Area. Yeah, just near Penong. I think this is called the, the Cohen Old School Rest Area or something. Just got a bit of light on it. The sun just popped out. I've been seeing a few sort of um, ruins along the road. Yeah, that was a, another great camp. Once again, found that on wiki camps coming into Penong, where all the windmills are. some of Australia's largest windmills in here. But, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting actually getting the light on it too. It's like a portable one. Portable windmill. So this is the Comet, Australia's biggest windmill. Greenfields now. Change of scenery. Well, the Nullarbor stretch is nearly over. I'm just coming into Sejuna. Just got the uh, quarantine station just up ahead here. Welcome to Sejuna. Well, that's pretty much it for the uh, for the Nullarbor. I'm going to sort of head down towards Port Lincoln now. So yeah, the little map I worked out. I probably did about um, 1,500 kilometres since Norseman. Norseman, yeah, about 1,500. Uh, probably about 180 litres of fuel. I sort of kept it about um, 2,000 revs. So I was doing about 80 kilometers an hour a lot of the way, especially with the um, with the headwind. So yeah, I wasn't in a hurry. So uh, yeah, I'm going to head down, sort of down the uh, Air Peninsula now. Might just go get some bread and some more water. Well, thanks for watching that episode. Into South Australia I am now.
Don't forget the thumbs up if you like that and the notification button and the subscribe button. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Oh, well, that's been a great campsite here on the Bunda Cliffs. Great Australian bite. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Dolphins down there.